Welcome back to the bench. It's time for another mailbag video. So let's see what we have this time. Quite a few items here. This, as you can see, is a piece of copper clad. Um, it's actually smaller than I expected it to be. Um, this is for making custom circuit boards. I was running out. As you can see, I purchased quite a few wires. Uh, these are just standard breadboard jumpers. Most of them are the slightly shorter size. Um, these are male to male, but then there's a couple of these longer ones here. And I bought two sets because I never seem to have enough of these. So this way I'll have hopefully enough for a little while. And then I purchased this, which is um, female to female uh, DuPont style connectors. I believe this is 40 wires. Um, and I purchased that because the other set that I had had started getting used up where I'd pull off a certain number and use that for one purpose. And so it's good to have some more around. This last set is the same. They're shorter, uh, but they're also uh, female to male instead of female to female. These are also very useful. I purchased two more of these I squared C, the small size OLEDs, um, as you can see there. I have one here that I purchased before. Um, this is 32 pixels tall by 128 pixels wide. The usual uh, OLEDs, the sort of more square ones, are 64 pixels tall by 128, so it's basically half an OLED. Um, but these are still pretty useful um, if you just want to show like one value or um, you know, a decent size, and maybe two values, a little bit smaller, maybe some status indicators, that sort of thing. And uh, they're relatively inexpensive, so I got two of them. The first one of these that I purchased uh, it took quite a long time to arrive, so uh, while I was still waiting for that to arrive, I purchased this one because I wasn't certain that that seller would actually deliver. I'd been waiting for that package for something like two and a half months. So this is another 433 megahertz um, transmitter and receiver. Um, the way these work is pretty interesting. Uh, basically, when you put uh, power to this middle pin here, uh, it just powers up the transmitter and it transmits at 433 megahertz and otherwise it doesn't transmit. So um, if you take a look at the waveform using the RTL SDR uh, from the TV tuner that I got, you can just see it kind of uh, puts out a really big peak there and if you're in close range it's a little bit of a dirty signal but um, I have to actually look up the legality of 433 megahertz in the US I think that's actually a ham band here so I might not technically be allowed to use this um, but there's there might be um, certain wattage restrictions under which it's it's legal and on this side it's really just a super heterodyne you know like an AM radio Morse code style thing uh, which is what this is doing, uh, and let's see if I can remember what that middle pin does. Yeah, it looks like it just outputs on both pins, which is what I remembered. See there, common together. I'm not 100% certain why that is. Seems to me three pins would be adequate, but that's the way it has it. Oh, and uh, it's interesting, if you are sending data through these, um, they don't do very well with being left on for a long period of time. So the protocol that you have needs to make use of transitions because those are easy to detect. But um, leaving it on for a long period of time doesn't seem to work that well. So it's kind of interesting and an interesting design challenge. But other than that, they're basically the equivalent of a wire. So whatever you put on, on this pin uh, should be coming out of that pin. 
but if you leave it there for a long time this might float back towards the middle so it's kind of interesting this device here is a PWM shield or device that is I squared C um, on the input and then offers up 16 channels of pulse width modulation on the output. I think this one's particularly designed to run servos, but um, I, I think you could use the PWM for LED lighting or other projects like that. So it's really neat because it allows you to take a microcontroller like the ESP8266, which doesn't have all that many pins, um, and and do something like PWM, which you couldn't do with, um, you know, just a, a generic I/O expander, which would just give you on and off inputs, but not enough speed in order to actually do PWM with. So this is pretty neat. Um, very useful if you're dealing with a, a constrained microcontroller, something like an AT Tiny or um, something else with not that many pins. In the vein of I squared C devices, um, I've just been kind of picking up different ones because I find the bus to be really fascinatingly useful. This is a, a humidity sensor that I uh, heard about that was supposed to be really high accuracy. Um, so I also have a DHT, I think it's a 22, um, and a BME 280, which is primarily a barometric pressure sensor, but it also has humidity on it. So it would be interesting to see how, in real world, world tests, the humidity compares between those devices and this one. But apparently this is quite a bit higher accuracy, and um, I think it's like 1% or something. I also got a few of these 6-pin connectors. These are the same style as an in-circuit serial uh, programmer header for Arduinos, except this is the female side. So um, I've been considering adding uh, standardized headers to um, ATtiny based projects. Cause those are really useful little boards. Um, so anyway, wanted to have some of these. Around. This is another module of the ADS1115, which is a 16 bit. Um, analog to digital converter uh, that it works over I squared C. I had read that the, these modules, the ones that are in blue with a little bit of a bigger footprint, have a less noise, um, and I was seeing a decent amount of noise on the on the purple one that I've been using. So I thought I would pick this one up and do use it as a comparison, just to see how good it was. The main difference that I can personally see is that all of these resistors are discrete, whereas on the the cheaper module, they're um, kind of a, a single package. I'll just get that a second. So if you compare these two modules, you can see they have the same components. Um, these capacitors here match, and then these four resistors are replaced by that package and then these two capacitors here. However the size of the components here is larger um, which I, I guess I don't know whether that's quality or not but it, it might mean that um, they're easier to calibrate um, and uh, being discrete may also help in some way. I really don't know how that would be but um, I'll t take a look at the two side by side. They do have an address pin here, which can be used in order to put both of them on the same bus. And that way I can kind of take a look at the same signal using both devices uh, and see if I can see a difference in my own tests. This is another I squared C sensor, the VL53LOX. And what this device does is it measures distance uh, using the time of flight that the light takes to bounce off, and I believe this uses infrared. Um, I've been really fascinated by uh, the fact that you could purchase these so cheaply. I think this is about $8 or something like that, and uh, 
We really just wanted to see how accurate they were in their accurate, more accurate modes and uh, whether they might be able to be used for um, precision movement uh, control with, yeah, as a feedback mechanism. The final item here is a silver epoxy. Um, as you can see, this leaked in travel, um, which is because it actually has a plunger in, so I, I'm a little surprised by that. Looks like I lost a decent amount. But the reason that I'm, I got this is that it's a conductive glue. Um, and I've, I've seen a video, which I'll try to link here in the description, um, of a guy who uses this glue and um, laser printing uh, to, to, he can get the, the glue to adhere just to the toner and not to the paper. Uh, basically just by heating it up and with several coats of that you end up with a decent um, resistance on the on the traces and you can actually use it to build your own uh, it's not exactly a PCB but it's um, can be used to build like single layer type of um, of circuits um, of course you do have the pretty significant drawback that you're on paper which means that when you try to solder to it, you have to use a low temperature solder um, and just be really careful. But I do also have some bismuth based uh, solder, which is the quite low temperature um, and should be suitable for it. So I'll give that a try and uh, share with you guys the results. Taking a look at these items on eBay, we can see the 16-bit ADS1115 module with the discrete chips cost $2.54 and all of these modules had free shipping. The 16 channel PWM board that's controlled over I2C cost $2.21. The 433 megahertz wireless transmitter and receiver modules cost 75 cents. The SI7021 humidity sensor that runs over I2C cost two dollars and sixty six cents. Our forty female to female jumper wires cost a dollar and thirty two cents. The two packs of sixty five jumper wires male to male cost two dollars and eighty eight cents. The six pin female headers cost ninety seven cents for ten pieces. The male to female DuPont connectors cost 94 cents. The VLX I2C distance measuring chip that uses an infrared laser cost $9.85. The copper clad board for custom circuit boards cost a dollar. The silver conductive glue, which I'll be using to make circuit boards on paper cost a dollar and fifty one cents. The two I squared C OLED d displays that are 128 by 32 pixels cost six dollars and eighty five cents for both. And these are today's mailbag items. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked this video please consider clicking the like button and maybe commenting those two things help a lot for YouTube's algorithms to know to share this video with other people. And if you'd like to get updates on uh, what I'm going to do with these items and upcoming projects that I'll have, uh, please consider subscribing. There should be a link right about here uh, that you can click to do that. And then I'll be putting some videos on the screen that you might enjoy. Uh, if you think you'd be interested in more projects like this, click them and uh, check them out. Thanks very much. Bye.